Hello and welcome to our Control Valves webinar that we're kicking off this year with. I am so excited for everyone to be here joining us and so excited for you to uh, hear this in-depth presentation on our control valves. Before we begin, I have a few housekeeping items to go over. For the duration of the presentation, your mic will be muted, but we do have a Q&A session at the very end, so please feel free to submit your questions either through the chat or through the Q&A um, box on your screen. Also, if you'd like to submit a question verbally, uh, I'll give the option for you to be able to unmute yourself uh, during our Q&A session. Another thing is uh, we will send out a survey, uh, I believe tomorrow for just a quick review of your feedback of this presentation. In addition, when you submit the survey, you'll also be able to receive a copy of this uh, presentation file. Now, without further ado, I want to introduce Mark Panero. Mark is the director of liquid sales products that include the control, the Daniel control valves and turbine meters. Mark supports the development of marketing of new solutions for the control valves and turbine meters product lines. Mark has held several sales, sales management and technical sales positions in the automation industry for the last 20 years. He also holds a BS mechanical engineering from the University of South Carolina and is currently working towards his MBA at Texas A&M. Without further ado, I welcome Mark. Well, welcome, welcome everybody. Thank you, thank you so much for taking the time today to uh, learn more about Daniel Control Valves. Uh, good morning, good afternoon, good evening uh, to uh, whatever part of the world you're in right now. So we appreciate the time, and really we hope that you uh, you take valuable information today from this uh, from this webinar. So the, the main, main takeaways that I wanted to give to you today, uh, of course, include an in-depth view of the Daniel 700 series control valves. We also wanted to uh, talk to you a little bit about the common applications that we, uh, we can target with our uh, Daniel control valves. Uh, we wanna discuss the main features of the valve, what are the main values uh, and benefits that you get from our valve. And of course, we wanna show you our advantage. How can we differentiate Daniel control valves from other products? So let's go ahead and keep forward. So the 700 control series, uh, 700 series control valves, that's the main base of our uh, series of valves. So that includes uh, basically our, our uh, valve. And uh, we kind of wanted to give you a little bit of a history of where we come from. Some, some would say that uh, Daniel control valves are the best kept secret. Uh, we don't want it to be a secret. We want our valve to be well known. And I'm sure that you have used our valves in the past or probably have heard about our valve. So we started in the 1950s with the original design of the valve. And to this day, we use basically the same design. We'll discuss that further in the presentation today. Uh, in the 70s, we went to uh, Brooks. So the acquisition of Brooks, uh, we included the turbine meter and the control valves, which are part of the Daniel family to this day. In the early 2000s, we moved all of our manufacturing to Chihuahua, Mexico, and that's where we make our valves to this day, and we haven't moved. We, we continue to offer quality products out of the same location. And moving forward, of course, we're always developing new solutions, looking at new um, opportunities to further increase our valve capability. So that's where we are right now. So the 700 series valve, it does include basically the, the main, uh, being a platform for all of our applications. So I really wanted to take a look and show you a little bit about what our valve, what are the main elements of our valve. So if you look here on the model, you see that the heart of the valve is the piston. So as you can see, that piston is what basically maintains the valve closed and, and open. So that's gonna stop your flow or continue your flow depending on the application. We do have O-rings that are sitting around the, the piston that basically facilitate the piston to go up and down the valve. We do have our cylinder, which you know cannot really be shown too well here in this model, but it's because it's a cutaway. But you know we do have the cylinder and O rings around that cylinder again to complete the sealing of the valve. Our cylinders and piston they they do sit in a body 
that's, uh, that has a 45 degree angle. Uh, we'll explain a lot more about that, why we use a 45 degree on our body. And again, other elements that we have in our valve include the cylinder head to, in, to close all your assembly and a spring that sits in the back of the piston to basically maintain the piston closed. So it is a balanced piston, meaning uh, with just the uh, unequilibrium of forces or you know, when increase of forces in the back of the piston, that piston is gonna close down or when there's no force uh, in the upstream of the valve, that piston, the base of the spring is gonna close down the piston as well. So yeah, those are the main elements of our valve. And basically, uh, if we keep going uh, forth, we see there's a little video that I'd like to show you that explains a little bit about the main series of the, the 700 series of control valves. And go ahead and uh, we'd like you to uh, take a look at it right now. Over 50 years, Daniel has been a leading brand for control valves used in marketing terminals and pipelines across the globe. Daniel control valves are a symbol of precision, versatility, and trustworthiness. The 700 series control valves provide the best control for most applications, including pressure, flow, back pressure, differential pressure, digital control, and surge relief. All the valves in the 700 series family are built upon the Daniel trusted body design which offers a 45 degree angle that provides higher flow capacity and lower pressure loss. The main components included in every Daniel 700 series control valve are the valve body, a carbon steel machine casting, providing the best housing for the valve components, meeting ANSI specifications at 150, 300 and 600 class. The cylinder head provides a safe closing element for the 700 series valves and facilitates access to the valve internal components, allowing the valve to remain in line while being serviced. The valve cylinder. So yeah, that's a great video. That video is available on our website. You can okay. definitely check it out. Uh, we'll show you the, uh, the resources later on in this presentation. So some of the main features of the 700 series valve, uh, it is a modular construction. So it's a very easy to maintain valve. Uh, that cylinder assembly and piston are very easy to access. With just the extraction of the cylinder head, all of those components are gonna be very easy to take out of the valve while the valve is still connected. Of course, for safety reasons, you wanna isolate, you don't wanna have any flow at that moment, but at that point, your valve will be easy to maintain, easy to, uh, to work on, to service. Uh, we, don't, we don't use any stuffing boxes, so there's no extra opportunities for leakage. And the 45 degree angle of the body, as you saw in the video, gives you the higher capacity, the, one of the highest C sub V available in the market right now. So, so those are some of the main features. Of course, there are many other features there, as you can see. Um, yeah, but um, those are the main ones we're gonna talk about today. So moving on to how, how can you use our valves? Where are you, where are you gonna be able to find our valves being used? So some of the main applications or the, uh, the main uses for our valve include the upstream on uh, close to uh, well uh, to the production facilities on lack skid units and as well as uh, crude pipelines. So you'll be able to find those, those valves again uh, for back pressure applications for uh, surge relief uh, on those, uh, those, uh, those locations on upstream. On midstream on many pipelines and uh, pump stations and compressors you'll be able to find our valves as well to maintain the integrity of the lines by relieving, relieving the surge on those lines. And again, on downstream, which is one of the most common applications you can find Daniel uh, control valves would include in marketing terminals and distribution as well. Uh, some of the uh, odd applications that you can find us at would include the aircraft refueling. A lot of airports uh, in North America and many other parts of the world do use Daniel valves to control their uh, jet fuel coming in and out. Uh, for very specific applications like asphalt loading, where heavy product is being flown through the pipeline, you can also use data control valves. And again, the main, again, some of the more common applications, which would also include blending, uh, barge loading and offloading, and solvents as well. That's where we'll be able to find us. So there's many, many applications you can use. And we actually wanted to take a poll. So if you want to take a moment and maybe uh, 
Um, so yeah, we're not going to take the poll. So I appreciate the, the opportunity. But if you do have any questions on how to use our valve, please ask that question during the Q&A session. We'll be happy to answer that. All right, so we wanted to discuss a little bit about each, each specific uh, control function of our valve and highlight three main functions today. And the first one we wanted to talk about is the digital control valve, the 788. By far is the, the valve that we, uh, we would probably find the most available at our global locations on marketing terminals and so on. So we wanna to talk to you a little bit about the main features of the 788. And those features would, of course, include it's a very linear response valve, which is great for loading applications. Uh, we're offering you a very smooth ramp up, a very precise flow control during the loading process, and a very smooth ramp down as well. So what that means to you is that you're not going to have an overfill of your tanks. Uh, you won't overfill your trucks during the loading application. And also, you have a very precise control throughout the whole process. Uh, it does offer a very low pressure drop, meaning you can work with just the, the small, the, the right size of valve for your line. You don't have to be larger you know, for that application. And again, it's a fail, fail safe, uh, meaning when the loss of power, that valve is going to automatically shut down and it'll, it'll stop your flow. So meaning there's no extra events happening at your location. Uh, we do offer this valve with, with uh, both options, UL and ATAX. Uh, UL mostly, mostly used here in North America, and ATAX for many, many applications uh, overseas, including Europe and so on. Uh, again, most, some of the most common ones we'd be able to find is the UL version with 1714 and 1715 pilots, which are basically ASCO pilots that can be easily found and can be replaced when needed. Uh, we do have conversion kits available, so you can come and talk to us, talk to your sales rep, company and call uh, Daniel as well. And we do have kids that would allow you to change from an old uh, solenoid uh, uh, combination assembly to a new solenoid assembly, uh, including the ASCO ones. So one of the common applications that I wanted to highlight today would be on a marketing terminal distribution, uh, something like a, a multi-loading application. So what you see here in the picture is basically the valve, the 788 that's being used to load product into that tank, tanker truck. Uh, the, the, all of those valves are connected to a preset. The preset will be taking flow rates from a flow meter that could be a turbine meter or any other kind of flow meter. And it'll be giving commands to that, those valves. The valves are gonna be opening and closing uh, very quickly to adjust the flow and maintain the same flow rate throughout the whole process. So in this case, you can load different products, different grades of gasoline, for instance, a premium, your, your regular grade, or other types of products like diesel and other refined products as well. So you, you know, like I said before, you're always gonna get the right volume, the right flow rates when wanted. And at the end of the process, you, you get a receipt and close your, your transaction. Basically, you know that you and your customer will make sure you're getting the right volume of product into that, into that turnkey train, excuse me, tanker truck that application. Uh, we do have 788s in stock, so make sure you come and talk to us, talk to your sales rep. Uh, it is a standard product with a vitonal ring, or it, we can have some exotic materials as well, uh, like Simres and Calres. Uh, we do offer in 24 volts, 120 AC, 24 DC, 120 AC, and 240 AC as well. And as I mentioned before, you, you have an ATAX uh, versions available all ready to ship all most of the times within just a couple of weeks so make sure you get a quote today for one of our sales companies and then you get a, you get the best uh, for your application on the 788 so the next product we wanted to talk about is a 7nl the nitrogen loader valve and it's exactly what we have here on display and we really wanted to focus on the main features of that valve that application So we, as we have, everybody knows, surge relief is an increasing concern these days as companies uh, start to grow their flow rates and their, their products going through their pipelines, there's always an increased risk of surge. And surge, as we know, is it's basically an increase of pressure, a sudden increase of pressure that can be caused by a valve that's being closed or by a pump that's triggering at the wrong time. And we do mitigate those surges by using a surge relief valve that's basically gonna take away that pressure and it will relieve your line very quickly. 
to uh, mitigate that problem. There's two basic ways we control surge at Daniel. Uh, we use a pilot valve, which in a lot of cases can be used to control surges for applications in which uh, a, a non-fast response is needed. So if your timeline is between three, three to four seconds, a pilot valve will be great for that application, mostly on refined products. Uh, if a heavy product is present, present like crude oil or anything like that, uh, and if a fast response is needed, then a nitrogen oil valve is the excellent product. For, for that use. So just to give you, uh, put that in perspective a little bit, uh, the difference between uh, the speed of response of a pilot valve and a nitrogen water valve, as you can see here on the graph, uh, some common response times of a 10 to 12 inch valve would be uh, in the uh, time frame of about you know, four to five seconds. And with a nitrogen water valve with a direct acting valve, it's just basically gonna be less than a second. You can open that valve as quickly as half a second or maybe less than that, depending on the differential pressure. Differential pressure, of course, that will be the pressure in between the uh, nitrodome or the uh, nitrogen system uh, reservoir and the upstream of the valve. So as one of the feature products on the nitrogen water valve that we want to talk about, the 762 and 65 are the most common ones. Uh, they do open an increasing pressure, so they will open very quickly when pressures increase. There's no pilot on this valve. As you can see, it's a total direct acting valve, so there's no opportunities for clogging or any other uh, issues that could be caused the valve not to open. It is a valve that works primarily on nitrogen, so very, uh, very easy, very um, um, available in a lot of locations as well. And it's a high flow capacity valve as well. Just a little bit on the operation of the valve again to uh, give you a little bit more detail on how the valve works. So basically what's gonna happen is, so as you can see there in the picture, when the, uh, the pressure in rad coming into the pipeline increases, that's basically going to overcome the pressure that's being exerted by the control system or on the nitrogen in this case. The nitrogen and oil are basically impinging force onto the back of the piston, maintaining the valve close. When the force upstream overcomes those, those two uh, forces, that piston is going to open very quickly. Uh, the oil that's present in the back of the piston is gonna flow up and basically that allow the valve, the valve piston to open and uh, maintain, um, to, to keep that flow going into your pipeline. Uh, because we use oil, again, it's a very important aspect is the fact that we can open very quickly, but we close very slowly. That oil is going through a small orifice valve inside our valve itself, and that has a much op large opening on the opening cycle and a very small opening on the closing cycle. So that's going to help you modulate and make sure you have the right speed. So, of course, you don't want to close that valve too quickly because that could cause recurring surges. So just to give you an example of how quickly we can open our surge relief valve, as you can see, our nitrogen loader valve, as you can see here, just a few examples of all the, the lines that we offer in between two and 16 inches. Uh, we do have some very, very fast uh, uh, speeds here, as you can see. So just to highlight the 12 inch valve as an example, again, as we saw in the other example, uh, this opens in less than half a second. So it's a very, very fast opening valve which is great and really what that's what's needed for your surge relief applications. So we do have a small video and we wanted to show that real quick so we can talk a little bit more about the operation. So what the simulation is showing basically is what we highlighted before uh, in the operation slide. Basically your upstream pressure is increasing and quickly opening that piston and allowing the oil to flow back uh, we do recommend that every time you, you uh, install a plenum, as you can see there on the, uh, um, on the simulation as well, uh, that's going to basically allow that excess nitrogen volume to go somewhere and basically allow your, your valve to open correctly. Uh, so yeah, there's many, many reasons why you want to use a, a nitrogen loader valve from Daniel for surge relief applications. And again, you know, the fast opening and the uh, slow closing of the valve are basically the main ones. 
So those this file does include does require a system to uh, to operate as we can see there in the uh, the diagram towards the bottom of the slide. You see that basically what's going to be required is a nitrogen bottle system to uh, feed that nitrogen into the valve itself. We do include a plenum. We recommend a plenum to be included every time you uh, you put a system together. So. And of course, you know, you have your isolation valves and other elements, your like your pressure transmitters and switches that are all included within this system to make sure you have always have the right set point pressure to open the valve at the right pressure. So we also have a couple of pictures there showing what a system looks like. So, so I would definitely encourage you to talk to one of our customer service specialists or our uh, sales rep companies to make sure you get the right system um, and make sure you have the right valve in place as well. So here we show you a couple of pictures from our valve being manufactured, and we wanted to highlight that we test all of our valves at 1.5 uh, times the maximum operating pressure. Uh, we do that as part of the requirement, and we, we, we just want to make sure that your valve is always going to maintain its integrity, the body itself and everything else, all the containing pressure elements are always going to be in good shape when you receive your valve. Uh, we also do a functional test. That, that's an extra requirement, but you can definitely talk to us and tell us if that's needed. Uh, and that would basically that includes is making sure your valve is opening at the right set point. So come and talk to us. Let us know what's needed. Uh, and we can include you know, those two, two tests. One is a standard and one is an optional. You know, and again, on the picture there, you can see a 16-inch, 600 ANSI valve, a very massive, very large valve, that uh, one of the ones we manufacture in Chihuahua as well. So for this next product, we're going to talk about the 707, uh, being one of the newest members of the family. The 707 is a spring loader valve. Basically, it doesn't need any nitrogen or pilots to operate. And we wanted to highlight that and basically uh, talk to you a little bit about the, the main features of the valve. So as you can see here on this cutaway model, the, uh, the body and the uh, opening Principle are all the same. We always use the same cylinder, same piston, which is great um, because again, you can change the, the type of uh, control that you need for your valve. But again, on this valve, a much, much simpler way to operate the valve, which basically is a spring that sits on top of the piston uh, and that can be changed as well. I mean, the, there's two, uh, excuse me, three sets, three settings of, uh, of uh, pressure points that can be used, uh, which go from five PSI all the way up to 130 PSI. Uh, we do include a lock on top on the top of the valve, basically to make sure once the set point is correct, that can be tampered with. So you can put a padlock there as well. Uh, the principle of operation, as I mentioned, is the same. You have a piston and a cylinder, and again, the same old rings and uh, the same 45 degree angle body, which is maintained throughout the 700 series. So a very easy, very um, easy to maintain valve as well. Uh, as you can see as well here in the back, I don't know if you can see it too well, there's a little uh, check line, which I really wanted to highlight and show you. Uh, when we designed this valve, we thought about uh, not only uh, being able to maintain the back pressure, which is the main function of this valve, but also including a check line. So in the event of a increase on the downstream of the valve, that pressure is going to be uh, basically fed onto, onto the back of the piston making sure there's no reverse flow. So that's going to close down the piston for you and the valve is going to be closed. So basically it's two valves in one. It's, it's a back pressure valve and a check valve as well. So it's a great product, a great, great product to, to use and a very versatile product as well. So some of the main features that we that we do find on the 707, it's a, uh, again, we already said it's a check feature included, which is great. It's a pilotless valve. So there's, there's no pilots, as you can see, uh, everything's being controlled by a spring at the back of the piston. So basically there's no possibilities for clogging. So this valve can be found on many crude oil lines and many uh, uh, crude oil measurement uh, systems as well. Uh, where there's there's you know high paraffins or, or debris on the line itself, so the, there's no possibility for clogging. There's no pilots. We do offer it in full ANSI rating, all the way up to 600 ANSI, which is great for for most applications. Uh, it can be very easily serviced. Uh, basically, we do offer 
uh, all the parts can be uh, purchased separately, as well as uh, you know we offer a kit that uh, can be also be used to uh, to replace those uh, those springs as well. So in the line, of course, the valve can be still sitting in the line itself with the uh, the line shut down, and the valve can be serviced. Just basically on the uh, very quickly on the uh, principles of operations, as we mentioned, the main purpose of this valve is to maintain back pressure for the line. So on a measurement skid, for instance, on a lack unit, uh, you want to make sure your, your meter is always full. So what this valve is going to do, it's going to maintain the back pressure all the way up to the set point of the valve. When that set point is reached, uh, that piston is going to automatically open up and it will allow just a little bit of product to go by. And once the, the pressure is reduced on the upstream of the valve, that piston is going to basically shut down again. Uh, and that's all again being controlled by the spring. That spring can be torqued down to uh, to change. So you, when you do purchase a valve from us, from, from Daniel, basically you're going to get from five to forty, or from thirty to eighty, or from thirty to all the way up to one hundred and twenty psi. So make sure you you talk to us when you talk to your sales rep, talk to Daniel. You what you mentioned what the set point needed is, so we may, we we get the right set point, uh, or we get the right range of springs for you. Some of the main applications where you'll be able to find our 707 uh, include, as we mentioned before, uh, LAC units. Uh, LACs are uh, lease automated custody transfer systems that are basically used for to measure a transaction between a, uh, a seller and a buyer of a product. Basically, here, what you can see here on the picture is a crude oil line. And basically, the 707 is being used to maintain the back pressure. Very, very important, essential for this operation because that meter is measuring at all times. And at all of those times, we want to make sure that meter is full and measuring, measuring accurately. So you'll be able to find the 707s in a lot of those applications, in a lot of those lines throughout North America and many parts of the world as well. It's been around for three years. So we're glad to say that it's a huge success. 707 has been, been uh, uh, promoted more and more, and a lot of customers are adopting as a standard solution for, for their applications. Uh, so hundreds of valves are adding service right now. It can be used in low and high temperature. Uh, it does come with standard bitonal rings. Uh, it's very easy to order as well. So just one part number will get you a complete valve with the right set of springs uh, for your use. So make sure you talk to one of us today to get the right quote for you. So last but not least, we're going to talk about the Daniel Advantage. How do we differentiate ourselves? What can you get from buying a Daniel valve? What, what are you going to get from us? So what you get, basically, uh, looking at a 788, for instance, uh, and one, one of the main differentiators is that the fact that we use electrical unions on our valve. So that's very important because when changing a solenoid, that valve is not going to have to come offline. Uh, some of our uh, some of the companies that manufacture some other manufacturers they do make a valve in which they have to come offline and to change the solenoids to work with that valve. You're not going to get that from us. Uh, the valve can stay in place. Uh, solenoids can be changed. That junction box can be changed as well. So making it very very easy to uh, maintain uh, with minimum downtime. Looking at some other uh, methods of, of control, for instance, like a diaphragm valve, there's many advantages of using a Daniel control valve, a piston valve. Uh, the linear action of a piston valve is unequal. So what you're gonna get is basically a very straightforward correlation between opening and, and uh, the flow rate that's needed for the valve. Uh, it is a um, it is uh, the highest flow and highest flow uh, capacity available, and it's a straightforward flow, meaning you're not going to have to go through strenuous paths inside the valve to to go to the uh, the downstream of the valve. So basically, uh, it's a high CV valve, which is going to get you the highest capacity and the highest reliability uh, that you can get out of the valve. So one of the highlights that we, we wanted to show you real quick again, as we mentioned, uh, the correlation between a, the opening of the valve and the flow rate is really, really significant on a Daniel control valve. When comparing to a diaphragm valve, as you can see there on the graph, uh, with just a, a little bit of opening at about 20 to 30%, you're gonna have already 
uh, you know, and the upwards of 50% of, uh, of flow rates. Uh, with the DNA control valve, the piston valve, you, that correlation is always going to be uh, direct. You're always going to get uh, one -to -one, almost a one-to-one -one ratio. So what that means to you is that when, when, when a loading applications like a 788 digital control valve, uh, you can always ensure that your valve is going to open at the right time and close at the right time. And you're going to get the right amount of product going through your line. So it's a great valve. Uh, and it's a great feature. And um, that's what we're going to highlight today when compared to diaphragm valves. All right, so uh, to sum it all up, we, we really wanted to uh, uh, give you a whole overview of what we talked about today. So the 788 is a, our digital control valve. It is the highest, one of the highest uh, precisions that you can get available on the market as far as control valves. It, it opens very smoothly and closes you know, very smoothly as well, give you the right um, operation. And it's a seamless, seamless in, integration, as, you can, as we saw there in the, one of the examples we offered. It's connected to a preset and it's not going to need any extra controls. It will open and close at the right time. A 7 nitrogen loader, 7 NL nitrogen loader valve is the fastest response valve available today. Uh, it is uh, slow closing also to avoid recurring surges. And it, all it needs is just an oil barrier. That's all it uses in the valve itself to open and close that valve along with the nitrogen system. The 707 is the easiest valve available for back pressure control. It's just one single part number, very easy to, uh, to obtain, very easy to purchase from us. And it's a very versatile valve offering from 150 all the way up to 600 NZ classes available for a use. Uh, talking a little bit about customer support, uh, most of our lead times are in between six and nine weeks right now. So make sure when you talk to our sales uh, rep companies and to any of us here at Daniel, um, you get the right lead times and also spare parts are available within three to seven business days. Uh, for most common ETO orders, meaning for custom products, there's going to be an uptime up of, you know, one to three weeks. So it's important to keep that in mind. Uh, we do have technical support available uh, Monday through Friday uh, around, you know, business hours. And we do offer support to our legacy products. So if you have an old Brooks valve or another type of valve that we used to sell, come and talk to us. There's a good chance you can probably still get some spare parts. And we'll, if not, we'll make sure you get the right quote for the replacement valve. And we do have retrofits available as well. Uh, one of the tools we wanted to highlight real quick is the uh, liquid size calculator. Uh, it is a great tool that's available on our website. You can download it off the, uh, the Daniel.com uh, website. Uh, you, uh, it does require registration. It's just a way of us to knowing who is downloading the tool, and uh, we can help you and support, support the tool as well. It's only available for a PC right now at the moment. Uh, it does offer sizing for thermometers and data control valves as well. So with just a couple of clicks of the buttons, you can basically go in and fill the parameters and being the first one, you, you wanna select the right function. So knowing what you're gonna be using the valve for, you can basically go in and select, you know, a digital control valve or a back pressure control or any other option. And that's gonna take you through the process uh, by entering the parameters. You can click on the little arrow down at the bottom and you're gonna get a report basically saying, Here's your result. Uh, you know, this is what the valve is required to do. And these are your process conditions and a great comparison between the two. Um, and also we give you a graph of all the responses that you can get out of our valve. So having said that, if you click on the button again, uh, you can uh, go to print and go uh, print a report and it's gonna come in an Excel format, which you can uh, use to uh, make sure you get, uh, you know, a, a good product size, uh, and also, you know, talk to our sales rep about the type of sizing or size of valve that you need to uh, traverse it at, at that time. So great solution available on the Daniel website. A little bit about the, our, our uh, representatives available in the U.S. right now. As you can see, uh, we have great coverage all across the, the United States uh, from the East Coast all the way to the West Coast. So make sure you contact um, any of our sales reps according to your needs. Uh, all the information is available on the Daniel website again. 
We're also present in Canada uh, with uh, highlighting Trillium as uh, you know one of uh, the, our, our representative in Canada right now. So make sure you do talk to the Trillium folks about your needs as well. Internationally, we do uh, have presence uh, with uh, Ruben Isara, which is our uh, director for sales of data products in Latin America. Mark Dutton covers the uh, MEA uh, region and Edwin Kwok in Asia Pacific. And the Daniel family uh, products is really, uh, it's, it's a lot more than valves itself. So we do have liquid thermometers that are available from, you know, small sizes, one inch, all the way up to 16 inches. Um, and as well, orifice fittings, which are, it's a great product. It's the flagship product of Daniel uh, to control all of your gas uh, product applications. So that's it for today. And we wanted to uh, kind of pause and take a moment and welcome any questions, any comments, or anything else we can help you with. Thank you so much, Mark, for that wonderful presentation. Just a quick note before we go into our Q&A session, this webinar is being recorded and it will be made available on our YouTube channel. Also, check out our YouTube channel. We do have two other webinars, one covering the liquid turbine meters with Angela Floyd and the other, the senior orifice fitting webinar with Steve Ift. All right, without further ado, let's uh, get into some questions. I see we actually have some uh, some questions here. So I'll just ask the question and Mark, please give us your response. Okay. How do O-ring seals perform in a dirty applications such as crude oil? Do you specify a particular elastomer for these applications? Yeah, so great question. Uh, basically, we use vital no rings uh, when there's not a NACE requirement. If there's a NACE requirement, you might have to go with different materials. So uh, for all applications, of course, uh, we want to try and maintain the debris out of the valve. That's that's a you know just a, a common knowledge. Uh, if there's if there are other products that are present within the fluid, uh, like I said, Viton is going to operate well uh, in most applications. Uh, if you do require something more exotic, let us know. We can again we can specify any other high temp or low temp uh, elastomers that are needed for the most part. Great. Another one is. What do you recommend for asphalt loading? Do you still have the 500 series? Great question. No, unfortunately, we don't have the 500 series anymore. Uh, we, we can use actually a nitrogen motor valve uh, for, for that kind of application. Again, because it's a non-pilot valve, it can be used for, for heavy uh, crude oil product and asphalt as well. So that's the one we recommend right now uh, for, for mostly for, for pressure control and uh, surge relief. For any other types of controls, uh, please uh, let us know, uh, contact us, send me an email, uh, contact one of our sales reps, and we'll make sure we can quote you the right product for your application. Wonderful. Does the nitrogen plenum have to be buried? Excellent question. So thanks so much. I really forgot to say that, but yeah, it is the plenum needs to be buried or, is or isolated. Uh, so yeah, it is recommended that a plenum is present in every nitrogen loaded system and that you isolate it properly to, to make sure there's no thermal expansion of the plenum itself. Yeah, so great question. Thanks so much. And how do you verify the surge relief valve has opened and there has been a relief? Do you offer any alarms or visual indication? Another great question. So the surge relief, the, the nitrogen loader valve does have little side indicators on the, on the reservoir itself. So that's just a quick way to check and make sure the valve is open or closed. So if you go to our manuals, you see that when the valve is open, you know, the, the indicators are all going to be basically, it, it'll, it'll look like oil, you know, you won't see anything. When the valve is closed, the top side indicator is going to be clear, meaning there's nitrogen. So basically that tells you very in a very quick manner is the valve is open or closed. Other than that, I and mean, we recommend, you know, according to your installations, you install uh, pressure transmitters, you know, in the downstream of the valve to make sure, you know, the valve is flowing at that moment. And another question for the model 707, would you recommend this for surge relief? Uh, no, I would not recommend a 707. Great question, by the way. Uh, the 707 is primarily used for back pressure applications. It is not a fast uh, response valve. So for surge relief applications, we definitely stand by the nitrogen loader valve. That is the best valve for fast opening applications. Great. 
Can you install a DP transmitter across the 707 to monitor differential pressure to verify operation? Can the ports on the valve be used to measure DP? Uh, we typically don't recommend that because, again, you know, that, that's something you want to measure on the downstream of the valve itself. So, uh, no, we haven't done that. We do, uh, we do have other controls like on the 788 and other pilot valves that can be installed, that are installed actually on the, uh, on the body of the valve itself. But we don't recommend install a, a pressure transmitter on the valve itself. It's not, it's not really used this day. So we do recommend you do tap it on, on the downstream of the valve to ensure if, it, if that's needed, you know, to make sure you're measuring the pressure at that point. Perfect. Any spare parts, especially seals for the former Daniel 1815 valve? Uh, great question. Uh, unfortunately, I mean, we can, let me, let me rephrase this, sorry. We can still offer the main O-rings, uh, some of the main O-rings. So I would definitely encourage you to come and talk to us, send us an email, and we can uh, look at the, the spare list, uh, the parts, the list of spare parts to uh, make sure we give you the right quote. Uh, right now, if you do have an 1815 valve and it's, you require another valve in place, uh, we, we do recommend a 788 valve to be put in place. Uh, we can find the right fit. And a lot of times, you know, you can get that, that same valve put in place to, uh, to use for that application, for the loading, you know, digital control application. For the 300 uh, valves on LPG truck loading service, what pilot options are available? 300 ANSI. Great question. So uh, for, for most 300 loading, uh, excuse me, uh, 300 control application, 300 ANSI control applications on LPG, we actually right now use the same pilots, the, 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 the same pilots we use in the 150 ANSI uh, control application. Uh, that's the 1714 and the 1715 pilots. We do have pilots that, that go higher. So if your line is gonna see a higher pressure, uh, we do recommend you go to a Daniel pilot. What that means is basically a pilot that it's going to withhold a lot more pressure, you know, as a 300 and sometimes as a 600 when needed, uh, using the same coil, the same uh, coil control uh, for that pilot. So again, it's something that, you know, we definitely recommend you talking to one of our sales rep and talking to us. Uh, we can specify the right pilots, you know, in, in the, uh, the bill of materials for you uh, to make sure, you know, you get the right pilot for the right pressure. All right, looks like we have our last question. We do have a couple more minutes. So if you do have any questions, uh, please feel free to submit them in the Q&A or in the chat box, or if you like to just ask uh, on air, that's fine. I can unmute you. All right, for uh, our last question, on the two inch control valves, do you still offer the reduced flow special trim? Great question. Uh, unfortunately, we don't. Uh, we saw a decline in need for, for the low flow. Uh, and again, if that's something you need, uh, please let us know. But uh, we definitely saw a decline in the low flow over the years, and we discontinued that option a couple of years back. If you do have a need for that, again, contact one of our sales rep, contact us here at Daniel. But we, we can ensure that you know you got the right flow, uh, the, the, the right valve at the right flow rates uh, for your application. Great. And another one, yep. uh, is carbon steel the only material available for all valve bodies? Yes, we only use carbon steel uh, for, for our valve bodies. Uh, it is an L LCC, so it is a, a low temperature carbon steel. So that is specified in our data sheets as well. So it's really good for most low temp applications, but we do use carbon steel as it is the common material available uh, for most valves. Uh, we do have a very uh, wider range of pilot controls. We do have controls in stainless steel as well, uh, mostly 304. And all the internal materials are, you know, stainless steel. So we do uh, offer, for the most part, stainless steel cylinders and stainless steel pistons as well. So, yeah, but for the body, it is most commonly carbon steel. Great. Thank you. Yep. All right. Well, it looks like this is... Uh all the questions we have. So thank you so much, everyone, for joining. And we hope to see you at our next webinar soon. Thank you.